Kuben Kassel, CFL TV, in association with MTK Global, we're at the press conference for the rematch, Bellew versus Hay. Bellew versus Hay. That's the correct title. It right? is. What did you make of the press conference? Interesting, good. I mean, not uh, you know, probably he's not going to give you the opportunity to put raw beef on the table. Or, slightly or, or, intense. Uh, the head's head was intense. Oh yeah, but it's very, it's all very intense. And I thought David Hay was. I mean, I don't know how you perceived it. I thought he, he seemed quite nervous. I mean, particularly in the head-to-head, -head, I thought he looked like he was quite emotional, to be honest with you. Tony, very different, very calm, very in control. And it's a really interesting dynamic. Last time, you thought it was, you know, a bit of a sort of freak fight, a bit of a, you know, like, oh, good old Tony, we're going to sling him in, he's going to make a few quid. Now you know this is a real fight. This is one of the best fights in the heavyweight division. And you're probably going to get people going, oh, there he goes again. You don't think that this is one of the best fights in the heavyweight division? Trust me when I say this is. Trust me when I say Tony Bellew will do the business again. Continuously written off. Just got his, just because he's got a little, you know, little little bit of moves going on. Just because he ain't an Adonis. You look at him, you think this guy, this guy, Goodison Park, won the world title against the odds. Masternak, slight underdog in that fight, wins the fight. David Hay, underdog in that fight, underdog again, not a problem. Tony Bellew, going on. I'm so happy people are actually seeing the real Tony Bellew, working class hero. Does everything for his family, would do anything for you. You stop him in the street, it applies to anyone out there. Never say no to a photo, you know, don't you? And you will back me up, one of the nicest yeah, no, geezers definitely. you could ever meet. No, I agree. What did you make of the robbing bank? A, a very interesting comparison. analogy, wasn't it? Um, we got where he's going with it. You know. Yeah, I mean, I think a lot of what uh, what Hay said in there was right. I don't say he robbed the bank, but what he did was he bowled up, he smashed the place up, he took the money, and he went home happily ever after. He didn't run out the bank. Do you know what I mean? It wasn't like it wasn't like he went in, nicked all the money, and was like, what he did was he went in. He put the sacks on his shoulder, he sparked up a lardy, and he went, fucking have some of that. See you later, boys. So it was like, it wasn't like a... Why is he going back to the bank? Let's talk like David Hay for a minute. Why is he going back well, to the bank? Because you go back to the bank because it's easy money. You know what I mean? It's not like, and, and that's where he got the analogy wrong, because it wasn't like, oh, there's going to be extra security ca cameras this time, security guards. No, no, no. He's going to bowl back to the bank because the safes are still open. The money's there. It's like, it's like, it's like just rolling out of the safe. In fact, there's, there's, there's like, there's wraps everywhere. Wraps of 50s, it's like, so he's just gonna walk straight in and he's gonna go, you let me back in to the, the bank of hay. And we're gonna walk back in again. And you know what he's gonna do again? He's gonna pick it up, he's gonna scoop it in the sacks again. It'll be the same Cuban. And he's gonna turn around, he's gonna go, you let me take the money again. And goodbye. So it's not like a frantic rob. Do you know what I mean? Like, he's not, he's not nicking. Do you know what I'm saying? He's not stealing. He's getting what's his. He's getting, he's getting what he deserves. So, maybe not robbing a bank, maybe sort of going into a bank to collect his money and Hay's money. But what he failed to mention, David Hay, was he made a lot of money out of that fight. In fact, David should have a picture of me and Tony in his room, or his living room, and every morning when he walks down for his cup of, you know, because like, he likes all that, like maybe a, a green shake or a herbal tea, he should go, morning Edward, morning Anthony, like that, and just sort of give us a little wave. <laughs> <laughs> but, but he did make a lot of money in that fight. But he also did show a lot of heart. Do you think that David's body is going to hold out in this fight? I hope not. But I do believe he's 100% fit. I do believe he does everything uh, right in his preparation. So fighters can get injured like you know Tony busted his hand in the first fight Hay might break his hand in the second I don't know but the plan is to take him to those waters but last in the last fight we believed Tony could knock him out Hay could run out of gas Hay's body could break down that they were some of the options going to fight and one of them happened so for us it wasn't like a fluke it was like take his shots take him into deep waters make him unravel make his body break down knock him out make him gas and, and that's what happened in the fight. But last time, and I know Dave Coldwell said we expected to win, I have to be honest, I hoped we would win. Do you know what I mean? I couldn't have said to you before the fight, we're 100% gonna win this fight. I believed he could do it, I hoped he could do it. Honestly, 
sitting up there looking at his fight. I, I expect to. I'll be disappointed if we don't win. Last time it was like, pl like please make this happen. You know what I mean? Now it's like, no, we're going to win. We, you know, we always go to win, but no, no, this isn't. It's a tough fight, but we, we win and we move on. So I'm excited. Take the injury aside, a lot mm. of people, uh, a lot of people said mm. that David would iron Tony out in yeah, a couple round, of rounds, yeah. and that was like the common theme. Mm. What makes you think that that doesn't happen if David Hayes' injury doesn't reoccur? Because in the it didn't fight? happen with no injury in the first fight. Right. Before he got injured, he'd done all those things. He couldn't hit Tony. When he did hit him, he took his power. Uh, Tony countered. You've got to speak to people in boxing. Don't speak to John Smith tugging one off over a Domino's. Right? Speak to people in boxing about Tony Bellew. Speak to Rob McCracken, speak to Carl Froch, speak to people who shared injury. He's an outstanding fighter. He's a world level fighter. That is why I'm saying this is a great fight, a great heavyweight fight. But I just think that sometimes people see Tony and like, you know, the Scouser and you know he's not an Adonis and they think, oh, this guy like he's just a have a go hero, isn't he? He's not. He's a brilliant no, fighter. Look at the resume. Yeah. Um, he said in that uh, press conference that his body broke down because of Tony Bennett, yeah. because of what he did in that fight. Yeah. Like I said, the ankle didn't give way if, to what the fifth or sixth round. If, so if if Hay had the power to iron Tony out, to Hay wouldn't have got injured. But he couldn't knock him out. He couldn't, you know, he couldn't catch him. Hay wanted to. Tony was taking his shots. He was hitting him back. He was making him miss. He was putting the pressure on. He was making his body break down. So Tony deserved that victory. You know. What would have happened if David wouldn't have got injured? I don't know. I haven't got a crystal ball. What I can tell you of, David would have got tired in the fight, and I believe Tony would have gone on to win the fight. Maybe I'm wrong. It's absolutely irrelevant. You know why? Because when I go on box rec at night, and I type in Tony Bellew, it says, one, TKO, 11, David Hay. Do you do that? Only sometimes when I'm feeling a little bit horny. Okay. Career ender if David Hay loses. 100%. For Bellew? Do you know what? With Tony, we haven't really. Got, Tony, like, we were. We could have taken the, the uh, David. Uh, Joseph Parker fight. It was like, uh, which one do you do? Obviously, after the Fury Fury fight, Parker's stock, stock just plummeted. And then all of a sudden, the money in this fight was so significantly more. It was like, do we want to win a World Heavyweight Championship? Yes, but this is a massive fight, and we'll beat Hay, and then we'll fight Parker. So that's really our aim, is to beat Hay and fight Joseph Parker. Um, but honestly, and going back to the Rob in the bank, yes, Tony has set himself up for just the most wonderful life, and, and for me, that makes me incredibly proud. He deserves it so much, and his kids are secure, their kids are secure, it's not, this fight isn't just like, it's not, let's just go and rob the bank again. This is about giving the fans what they want, which Tony wants to do. It's about proving people wrong again. And like he said, he loves to fight. He loves a challenge. So what's happened to Tony Bellew's career is probably the most pleasing chapter of, selfishly, my career. Because I am so happy what has happened to him. And he deserves everything because he's given his complete life to the sport of boxing. Not everyone gets lucky. A lot of people give their life to boxing and don't reap the rewards. Tony has, when it happens, and when it happens to someone like Tony, it couldn't make me happy. After Darren Barker, obviously. Darren Barker the same. But you know, all these, all these great fighters that come through, um, you, know, you share great times with them. And, and yes, Tony has had it off, and good luck to him. Give me some names to the undercard, what have you got? Working on it at the moment with, with Haymaker, obviously they've got um, Joe Joyce, he's got to come for a very tough tight fight with Ian Lewinson. They're yeah. hoping he beats Lewinson and maybe fights the Alan Thomas winner for the Commonwealth heavyweight title or even fight the British title after Cornish and Sexton fight, I think. Is that Friday? It's Friday. Yes, Friday. Um, so we've got loads of guys we need to get out before the end of the year, looking to step up some Olympians in title fights as well. Um, you know, they've also got um, a couple of other fighters now that they're working with at Haymaker. Um, Is it going to so be a similar level-ish card to, to the last, the one? Yeah, last one? Yeah, yeah, I would say so. Like, like a world title fight, like a couple of good domestic fights, some prospects stepping up in big title fights. 
Bigger car. No hole in that though. Possibly. 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 Okay. Um, I know you've got people waiting for you. Just a quick note on this. Obviously, you flew straight in from New York mm. from the press conference. That's unbelievable. Yesterday. Yeah, really good. Um, how did it go down there? Really good. It was absolutely packed. Um, we had a right touch because Lewis Arias uh, is a complete character, and I would like to take all the credit for picking Luis Arias, but I picked him because I watched him against Magda Marmev on the Kovalev war card, and he's a real good young fighter. I know he could talk a little bit. Mayweather's old fighter. Right? Yeah, but I turned up and um, he came straight up to me, had like some Gucci tracksuit suit on, and he went, yo, hurry, motherfucker. He went, you made a big mistake, boy. And I went, oh, that's good, mate, that's good. He went, we're talking about it's good. Man, you want to pick me out? You think you're cherry picking with me, baby? I went, mate, don't do this now. Do it up there. He went, I'm not, I'm not playing. I went, I know you're not, but just do it up there. And then when we got up there, when we got up there, he was like, you see him, he goes, down goes Jacobs, down goes Jacobs. Before we know it, they're going backwards and forwards. Then baby Miller gets up. He's having a go at Marius Whack. And the, the, the press and the people are like, oh, we've got a fight card here. It's called Hype. You know? Who else is going to be on the card? Well, we have another televised fight with HBO to be announced, which we'll do later this week. I'm looking to take one, probably two of our young fighters as well to go and fight on the card. This American thing, I mean, it's, it's amazing for our business, and you know, we'll see where it goes. But the plan is to dominate there, like we dominate here, over time. Um, I mean, that took me a few years here, but I think I, I think we can do it even quicker in America um, if we can just get a bit of confidence. Uh, I think that this is such a great deal for our younger fighters as well because we're going to be able to take them to America to build them on the HBO platform and build them into superstars on both sides of the Atlantic. Cal Yefi is a great example. HBO dying to get Cal Yefi on the next Superfly card, but he's got a very tough fight against Ishida on October 28th, so we'll see. Quick Dylan White update. Wilder yeah, I mean, I'm waiting on our Heyman's guys to tell me what Wilder is doing. He's not going to fight. Dylan White, it's just... Uh, but I'd what about the all Well, fight? this is what I'm saying. If, if I'm saying to Heyman, let Wilder fight Stiverne, he's his mandatory, and let Dillian fight Brazil, okay? On your um, yeah, and maybe the winners can fight each other. Um, but I've got a horrible feeling they're trying to still do the Ortiz fight, which would just be a farce. So we'll see what happens. But I also think they might fight Brazil. In which case, we'll fight the Verne if they want. But I'm reaching out again to all heavyweights in the top 15 of the world rankings. If you want to get paid on October 28th in front of 80,000 people, I have a fighter called Dillian White, one of the most feared heavyweights out there. And I tell you that because every time someone tells me how much they want to fight Dillian White, I tell them they've got a deal and they come back to me and say, oh, actually, uh, you know, he's getting a pedicure that night or something like that. Dillian White is ready to fight October 28th. Brazil, Stavern, Wilder, Dimitrenko, uh, Hellenius, um, Takam, like anyone who wants it. So please, managers, advisors, fighters, get in touch with me. We want to get this boxed off by Friday. We've got a big, big week here. We just finished Hay Bellew. Crawler Burns presser tomorrow. Mate, we're expecting about 11, 12,000 MNs. It's going to be an amazing atmosphere. Public workout tonight at the hotel football, or football museum, sorry. Press conference tomorrow at Radisson, everyone welcome. Sorry, at, at hotel football. Friday is the weigh-in at the Radisson. I've just stepped off a plane. Forgive me for not speaking as fluently as always. Um, and just mental times for boxing, mental times. And don't forget your little show that you're streaming on Saturday night as well. Yeah, thanks. So we, you've got a lot of competition on Saturday night. You've got Crawler against Burns. You've got, I think Cyclone have got a show from York Hall. You've got Eubank Yildrim on pay-per-view. And then you've got your show from Brentwood Centre. So can you just advise people to have Crawler Burns on, on the telly? Well, that's obviously the fight. And Listen, on there's the only laptop, one fight to watch this weekend, that's Crawler Burns. But on the laptop, a little laptop. stream of the old... Uh, um, IFL, MTK. IFL MTK show. Yeah. Little stream of that. Crawler burns on the big screen, of course, you know, live Not HD. Two tellies, isn't yeah. You know? No, but you, listen, what you're doing is great. It's a good idea. I keep saying to people, more boxing on TV, the better. It's not all going to last, but the competition is rife, and that's great for fans because we all want to win. Do you want to win? I want to win. I want to win. All I do is win, 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 no matter what. Got money on my mind.
See you later.